in an industrial setting a burst or leak in a pipe containing steam can be extremely hazardous to the people nearby they can experience severe burns over a large part of their body and lungs these burns are much worse than what they might have experienced if they had skin contact with the same amount of boiling liquid water in either case the burns result from the fast release of heat as the steam or boiling water cools to skin temperature even if the steam and the boiling water start out at the same temperature, 100 degrees Celsius, the steam burn will be more severe. This is because steam must change phase as it cools to body temperature, and the process of condensation is exothermic. Gas molecules must lose a lot of heat before they can go back into the liquid phase. 40.7 kilojoules for every one mole of water molecules that condenses. All phase changes involve energy. To go in the reverse direction, from liquid to gas, one mole of water molecules must gain 40.7 kilojoules. Notice it's the same absolute amount of energy in either direction. This amount is actually the enthalpy of vaporization for water. It's a positive value for vaporization, an endothermic process. It's a negative value for condensation, which is exothermic. We see the same types of relationships for melting and freezing. Melting requires an input, input of 6.02 kilojoules per mole of water molecules. This is known as the enthalpy of fusion. Freezing actually releases heat. Water molecules must lose energy to slow down and form the crystal lattice structure of ice. As a result, the sign on the enthalpy of fusion is negative for this process. We can use these enthalpies to calculate the amount of energy that might be released or absorbed during any process that involves a phase change. For example, we can calculate the amount of heat released by one gram of steam condensing into water. The formula we use is Q equals N times delta H, where Q equals the heat released or absorbed in kilojoules. N stands for the number of moles of water involved. This is easily calculated from the grams given. The molar mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole. We set up our conversion from grams to moles so that grams cancel out, leaving us with moles. This means that one mole is in the numerator and 18.02 grams is in the denominator. Finally, delta H is the enthalpy value for the phase change and substance. For the condensation of water, this is negative 40.7 kilojoules per mole. We pull all this together into one unit conversion calculation, where one gram times one mole of water divided by 18.02 grams of water times negative 40.7 kilojoules per mole is equal to negative 2.26 kilojoules. Our grams cancel out and our moles cancel out, leaving us with final units of kilojoules. In a steam burn, the heat released actually comes from two processes. First, the condensation of steam to liquid water, and second, the liquid water releases additional heat as it cools from 100 degrees Celsius to body temperature. To calculate this full amount, we need to calculate the heat released in each individual process and add them together. We calculated the heat released by one gram of steam condensing in the last problem. It's negative 2.26 kilojoules. To calculate the heat released by water cooling from 100 to 37 degrees Celsius, we need to do a specific heat capacity calculation. The formula for this is Q equals M times C sub S times delta T, where Q equals the heat released or absorbed in joules. M is the mass of the substance in grams, in this case, the mass of water. And C sub S is the specific heat capacity of the substance, in this case, liquid water. Finally, delta T is the temperature change of the water, which is always calculated as the final temperature minus the initial. In this case, the final temperature was 37 degrees Celsius, while the initial temperature was 100 degrees Celsius. This difference is negative 63 degrees Celsius. 
Substituting these values into the heat capacity formula gives us negative 280.06 joules of heat released. Notice that all of the units cancel except for joules. We need to convert our final answer to kilojoules to add to the heat released during condensation in the first part. When we add the heats released in both parts of the process together, we get a total heat release of negative 2.54 kilojoules. Notice that the bulk of this heat release comes from the phase change condensation. This is why a steam burn can cause more damage than a hot water burn at the same temperature. These two formulas can be used in combination for any number of processes involving phase changes. To use them, you must know the constants for enthalpy and specific heat for all the phases and substances involved. I'm giving you the constants for water here. The graph on the screen is known as a heating curve. It's drawn for water here, but similar graphs can be drawn for any type of substance. It shows the relationship between temperature on the y-axis and energy added or released on the x-axis. You can see that the temperature relationships clearly mark out five distinct sections of the graph. Sections 1, 3, and 5 represent the temperature change that occurs as heat is added to a single phase. Section 1 shows the temperature change for ice, section 3 for liquid water, and section 5 for steam. The heat absorbed during each of these sections can be calculated using the heat capacity formula. Q equals M times C times delta T. Each phase has its own specific heat capacity value, as you can see. It's important to make sure you use the correct specific heat capacity constant for each phase. Sections 2 and 4 both represent phase changes. Section 2 is melting or freezing, while section 4 represents evaporation and condensation. Notice that the temperature does not change during these sections. This is because all added heat energy goes towards breaking the molecules free from the restrictions of intermolecular forces so they can move more freely relative to each other. The amount of energy absorbed in each of these sections can be calculated using the enthalpy values for that phase change. The formula is Q, or heat, equals N, or the moles of the substance, times the enthalpy for the phase change. For melting, that enthalpy is positive 6.02 kilojoules per mole. Remember that the enthalpy for freezing is simply negative 6.02 kilojoules per mole. For vaporization, the enthalpy is much higher, 40.7 kilojoules per mole. The enthalpy for condensation, again, is negative 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Let's look at one more example of how to use these values. Did you know that citrus growers sometimes protect their fruit from cold weather by spraying them with water and letting the water freeze over the fruit? How does this help? Remember that freezing is actually an exothermic process. To go from the liquid state to the solid crystal, water molecules must lose energy. That released heat energy absorbed, is absorbed by the fruit and protects them from the cold. Let's calculate how much heat is released when 10 kilograms of water at 4 degrees Celsius is cooled to 0 degrees and frozen. This actually involves two processes, cooling the water from 4 degrees to 0 degrees and then freezing. Each process has its own heat calculation. Let's start with the heat calculation for cooling liquid water from 4 to 0 degrees Celsius. Because this involves a change in temperature, we use the specific heat capacity formula. Remember that Q stands for the amount of heat released or absorbed in joules. Mass must be in units of grams to cancel out with our specific heat units. We must convert from kilograms into grams. We also must use the specific heat capacity for liquid water because we're dealing with liquid cooling temperature. So this is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And our temperature changes from 4 degrees to 0 degrees. Using the formula final minus initial, this gives us a temperature change value of negative 4 degrees Celsius. We plug these values into our formula, and we get negative 1.67 times 10 to the fifth joules. 
Let's convert this into kilojoules for a more reasonably sized value. That's negative 167 kilojoules. The second part of this process is a phase change, water freezing. We need to use the enthalpy formula to calculate the exact energy involved. Using this formula, remember that Q equals the heat released or absorbed in kilojoules this time. N stands for the moles of water. We can calculate this from the mass of water simply by dividing by the molar mass of water. Delta H equals the enthalpy value for freezing. In this case, negative 6.02 kilojoules per mole. Plugging these values into our formula yields negative 3.34 times 10 to the third kilojoules of heat released. Finally, we can add the heat released in each process together to get the total heat released. In this case, negative 3.51 times 10 to the third kilojoules. Notice that most of the heat released again comes from the phase change, in this case, the freezing of water. To summarize, phase changes are associated with a lot of energy. Processes like melting and boiling require energy and are therefore endothermic. Processes like condensation and freezing actually release energy and are exothermic. We can calculate the energy associated with any phase and temperature change process by using a combination of two formulas. The energy for just the phase change must be calculated separately using the enthalpy value for that process. The energy associated with changing temperature of a single phase must be calculated using the specific heat capacity formula.